So, Alan, we have a trench system here. Yes, we do. And, and what we're trying to show the students here is exactly why trenches were put where they were put. And, uh, and this is a good place to sit. I mean, this is a, an original, well, it's a German trench, but rebuilt exactly as it was, using the same materials available at the time. You've got a front line here, a support line behind it, which is there now, a third line, something up to a fourth line. The position can be up to half a mile in depth. And for every square kilometre of trench, you've got up to 10 kilometres of trenches. So it's a complete rabbit warren in here. Very, very difficult to, to, to move around it. Most people thought that the soldiers were put here really until they were killed, wounded, or the war finished. Not so. It was, in a lot of cases, like a 21 day cycle. Seven days in the front line, seven days in reserve in case the Germans break through, and then seven days at rest. But you didn't really rest because everything was done by hand. Everything was brought up at night, food, ammunition, water supplies, everything by night. One of the things the Western Front, of course, had plenty of was men. And you'd be absolutely bone tired bringing this stuff up. And, and you didn't really say, get this rest. Because the, the, the biggest problem was, um, how do you communicate? Because battlefield radios hadn't been invented yet. Second thing is, how do you, um, you know, find your way around this maze of trenches, particularly when you got into an enemy trench? And the third thing is, how did you fight? Because you probably realise that this trench is probably around about 0.8 metres wide. The British Army, in its infinite wisdom, has given you a weapon system that in fact is one and a half metres long. So in other words, this in here for fighting is probably about as much use as a chocolate fire guard, because you can't really fight with it. So what do they do? Well, they kind of made their own. And here's one I made earlier. You'll probably notice that the, in the audience you'll notice, well, this is a rounder's bat. And all you do is you drill a hole in it, put some lead in it, give it a bit of weight, and because I come from Essex, I bang six-inch nails through it. Strap it to your wrist, and then what you've got, you've got the perfect trench fighting weapon system. Not designed necessarily to kill, but to make sure he does not want to get up again in a hurry. Seriously ruin your day. It would, it certainly would. They had other things. They would use things like sharpened shovels. They would use trench fighting knives, knuckle dusters, grenades invented purely for, or originally for trench fighting. Anything they could to avoid having to get back out the trench and across the killing field of no man's land. We have a generation of politicians, it's not their fault really, who believe that war is a matter of missiles that turn right at traffic lights, go down ventilator shafts, and it's clean, surgical and precise. Well, it's not. It's a dirty, disgusting, filthy business. And that doesn't change from what happened in the First World War to what's happening today.